Hey guys, today we're looking at uh, Suku. We're going to do evaluation for them. And if this is your first time on the channel, what we do here is we look at the data behind different blockchain and crypto projects so you can make better unbiased decisions about uh, what kind of altcoins you want to get into. So no hopium. I was trying to cut out the hopium and the marketing. So let's share my screen here and we'll uh, we'll get started taking a look. So let's go first to the... Uh, the website here, so Suku is basically, a, they, they build, them, build themselves as a frictionless Web3 tool, allows you to swap uh, tokens using, uh, they got a Twitter wallet. They have a couple other smaller projects, but this thing's rolled out in beta uh, and it people are using it. They've got about, about 100,000 uh, users. So let's look through real quick the uh, project summary. Uh, it, they basically create a Web3 address through your Twitter, Twitter handle and so it allows you to connect um, and swap uh, either tokens or mint M NFTs, which I think is a pretty big use case. Uh, you know, the friction, if you ever minted an NFT, there's a lot of like work connecting and during the mint and uh, it can be quite quite a hassle and PIA. So I think that's a good, good use case for it as well. Um, you know, the problem it solves, we talked about it, lowers the friction for retail investors or anyone actually but um what that does is it draws in more consumers more retail into crypto uh so if you looking at twitter you've got uh you've got about 500 million users on twitter if you can get a percentage of those to start buying crypto swapping it and uh minting nfts then you've created a pretty uh a, a much larger market so the opportunity for this project i think is is uh really high uh, I think the question is going to be more about the business case and uh, you know and, and adoption, right? And then there's always the chance that you know there's always the opportunity if they can um, pull it off is to migrate into other uh, social media platforms. Uh, you know who knows if um, th they're going to be able to execute on that. Sounds like a tough bill, but Twitter's a big enough market to start in, so I think they're uh, positioned really well as far as kicking things off. The uh, revenue potential for them, uh, they can make a, you know, I don't know what they are doing right now as far as uh, making fees. I, I looked and searched for quite a while, but couldn't find how much they're making off each transaction. That's uh, a way they could definitely generate revenue, kind of like a, a DEX does. So we can kind of use uh, Uniswap as a baseline. Uniswap charges, they're about 30 cents per transaction. Um and uh, because they'd have a larger audience than than a DEX, because uh, you wouldn't have to, you know, go through all the all the you don't have to have all the knowledge to go and get a, a crypto wallet, and um, and you know go on the exchange and do the swaps. Uh, they could they could you know get a much bigger audience and make more revenue um, than like a Uniswap could uh, theoretically. I think a lot of the question just comes down to like I said before adoption. Uh, so if you, uh, if we'd assume, I think in this, this calculation, I assume, uh, that, uh, that the, the project gets about 125, um, thousand transactions a day, uh, for a month. I'm just did like a monthly analysis here. If we use the Uniswap fees, that's 30 cents a transaction. Their revenue would be about, uh, they'd be about a million, um, 1.1 million per, per month. If we use a multiplier, uh, I've gone over this a little bit in other videos, multiplier in bull, bull cycles between 25 and 300 in the last one. Uh, we just go conservative here at 40, uh, 40 times. That'd be a valuation of about uh, 500, 540 million. And again, this is just goes all back to adoption, right? They've got 100,000 uh, users right, right now. If they're able to grow that to, to a million users on Twitter, you know, you might be able to you might be able to make the case that they're doing 50, 75,000 transactions. If they get to 10 million, I think it's you can easily make the case that they're doing 125 um, transactions a, a day, especially in, in a bull cycle. So uh the multiplier could easily be larger. I mean, if you get up to that many users, you're gonna have a lot of people believing in the project and um you know, purchasing the token. But there are some other concerns here with this project. The, uh, I think it's an inflationary token, but the biggest concern is 85% of these uh, tokens are owned by whales. Um, I did not con 
confirm the inflationary. So don't, uh, don't take my word on that quite yet. Uh, so yeah, only 15% is circulating supply, which, you know, there, it's kind of like a double-edged sword here. You've got uh, a low float, basically, few, uh, low supply. So if the whales don't sell, then you're going to have, uh, you know, the price is going to change pretty, uh, pretty quickly. It's not technically a float, but you know what I mean? If those guys are locked in and they decide not to sell, then, um, you know, it can be pretty volatile in, in a good way on the way up. Um, but you, you always have to be concerned about downward price pressure on, on the whales um, selling. And I think it's more of a concern in this project because they raised uh, $16 million through uh, IPO, or sorry, ICO, uh, and private sales back in like 2019, I think. So I, I'm sure a lot of those holders would like to like to get out uh, so I can see, I can see, definitely see some negative price pressure. Uh, that just tells me that, um, you know, if we do get a lot of, if they, if they do get a lot of traction, you might not see price, um, price really increase that quickly, uh, especially, um, you know, especially if these guys want to get out. And I think they would, if you've been holding your money that long, um, through the, through the bear cycle, I can uh, I could see them selling. So some of the risks and downside is they they will probably face uh, as they gain adoption they'll probably face some competition from from X and uh, Elon over there. Uh, if they if they're able to uh, form a good partnership that would could be actually beneficial to them. So we'll see how see how that progresses. And then uh, currently they only support two chains Polygon and Ethereum, uh, but the, those are those are big chains. So it gives them. Gives them enough uh, traction there. Some of the comps, like I mentioned, DEXs are, are a great comp for them. I use Uniswap because it's the biggest biggest DEX. Uh, they did about uh, 22 million or billion at the last uh, market cap. They've got they've been down recently, obviously because of the the uh, investigation. Uh, if you do a cycle multiplier on that, you're getting around 43 billion as a top for Uniswap on this cycle. And uh, and then obviously wallets and socials are kind of some of the other projects that this is similar um, similar to. Uh, right now, I think they're a little north of 51 uh, million on their market cap. And I gave them a base case of about 500 uh, million. I, I think that's uh, might be a little lower than, than most people expect, but that's because of all the uh, all the whale pressure that, that they could see. And then also some of the adoption, uh, some of the adoption struggles that they they might face as well. Uh, it's going to come down to execution. But you know, if they're able to execute, able to get adopt, you know, really good adoption in this bull cycle, then I and the whales, you know, don't uh, don't sell the project out from underneath them. This project could do really well, and I, that's why I'm I'm covering it. So I I call it a pretty high risk play, uh, speculative potential. If uh, you know the model shoots out about seventy five percent. Staying power is about uh, 68, and that's a combination of the whales and, and uh, a little bit of the fact that the, the product's still in beta, right? If, if it was a full, uh, you know, generally available uh, wallet at this point, I'd be more confident in their ability to um, to to get the project, you know, or to get the wallet adopted in Twitter quicker. Uh, but just, just uh, since they're not through the beta phase, I've got uh, got my doubts, and just I think it's going to depend on how long the uh, this bull cycle is. So, reputation seems pretty strong. <clears throat> I mean, I don't really like the ICO. I don't like the whale holdings, but they uh, they have shown a uh, ability to execute on on their uh, on their projects. So, I think that uh, that shows that they are actively working. And then it also in the um, in their Telegram, they're talking a lot about how they don't, um, you know. They don't like talking about price of the uh, of the project of the token. I focused a lot more on um, on implementation and you know what the product can do. So that bodes well for their reputation. Uh, a lot of missing inputs that you know, relative to other projects I've covered. So um, definitely, definitely, uh, this is not uh, gospel here. So hey, if you stuck around this long, you probably found this uh, information uh, useful. So hit the subscribe button, subscribe button and uh, get a notification next time I do another deep data based analysis of a project. And thanks for watching.